What you subject your ears to hear and your eyes to see will determine who you will eventually turn out to become. Our focus today is however on the eye gate and how it opens spiritual doors in our lives. Our eyes are a gate that leads to our hearts and our spiritual lives. They are a gate that leads to our thoughts and our beliefs and actions. The thoughts you constantly think about are because of years and years and decades and decades of what you have been watching, what you have been looking at. What you see largely determines how you think, how your mind is wired. What is the state of your spiritual life? Do you know what this tells me? This tells me that I must be ever so careful what I allow my eyes to see. You have to be so careful as to what you allow your eyes to see. A Christian must be selective over the type of things they watch and listen to. Don't just watch any filth the TV or the internet presents in front of your eyes. Guard your eyes. I am telling you now, if you learn to guide your eyes, you will save yourself from so many bad situations and bad decisions. More seriously is the fact that what we see physically can permeate into our spiritual life and corrupt our spirituality. Anyone who can guard and discipline his or her heart would have automatically protected his or her heart from being polluted. There is an undeniable, unquestionable, unequivocal link to the human eye and the human mind. There is an undeniable, unquestionable, unequivocal link to the human eye and the human heart. You cannot deny this link. The lust of the eyes was what led the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. If Eve had disciplined her eyes, she wouldn't have eaten the forbidden fruit. The Bible says that she saw that the fruit was good for food and desirable to make one wise. The forbidden fruit was not good until she saw it that way. The lust of the eye will make something evil to appear good to a person. There is a great affinity between our eyes and our hearts and we need to be conscious of that. We see it in the life of David. 2 Samuel 11 verse 2 and it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. David saw a woman taking her bath while she was on the rooftop, and he couldn't look away. He processed that thought in his heart until that singular sight led him into adultery and murder. Although David had several wiles at that time, the lust of the eye would not allow him to be satisfied with his wives. What was it that Bathsheba had that the wives of David did not possess? But people who cannot discipline themselves on what they watch will eventually end up acting foolish and putting themselves in big troubles. Your eyes can put you in trouble, but before they do, you can stop them. You can stop them. Don't feed your mind with lustfully images. The thing you watch will eventually become thoughts, and those thoughts will become action. If you want to live a holy life, if you want to live a life of righteousness, a life of obeying the commands of God, you cannot allow your eyes to watch whatever they want. As a Christian, you need to set up boundaries for yourself. And if you are a parent, it is your duty, it is your responsibility to set up boundaries for your children. There are so many apps now that allow parental locks. Set them up and protect the mind of your child. Don't allow the internet and TV and the society to raise your children. 
They are your children. They are your responsibility. You need to be in their business. You need to know what they are watching, who they are hanging around, who they associate with. You have to watch what they look and what they watch because that influences the way they think and that will shape their future. And you need to practice what you preach. Don't discipline your children to watch on certain things, but yet you watch all sorts on the TV and internet. Guard your eyes, protect them. It is amazing how Jesus connected what we do with our sight with fornication and adultery in Matthew 5 verse 27 and 28, which says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. In the Old Testament, the law only prosecuted those that are caught in the act of adultery or fornication or other forms of immorality. Back then, if an adulterer is not caught with evidence, then he or she is free from the law. Again, in the Old Testament, there was nothing said about the lust of eyes, which is the foundation for the committal of sexual sins. However, Jesus came to repeal this law by saying that a person is not only guilty when he or she indulges in the very act of sexual immorality, but that heaven takes into account the very moment he or she begins to look lustfully at a woman or man, as the case may be. So, sexual immorality is birthed, first of all, by a lustful sight. No one can commit sexual immorality in his or her heart without, first of all, having a lustful sight. So the discipline of our eyes is very important if we are going to secure our spiritual lives. You have an eyelid so that you can shut your eyes from evil sights. The decision to look at or look away is always yours and mine, and we are going to give account for what we do with that liberty. Every one of us just have to discipline ourselves like Job to make a covenant of purity with our eyes. Job 31 verse 1 I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Any man that does not adopt the discipline of Job will mess himself up especially in this extremely corrupt generation. Any woman that does not adopt the discipline of Job will mess herself up, especially in this extremely corrupt generation. Take accountability for your eyes. You are in control. You are in charge. I think we need the discipline of Job in our time more than it was needed in their time. Anywhere you go nowadays, you are just bombarded with the lust of the eyes. Shops, colleges, airports, both Christian men and women need to discipline their eyes. We must make a covenant with our eyes. Jesus knew what it implies if we have to fight the battle of our sight in order to overcome immoral sins. When he said in Matthew 5 verse 29, And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. 